I'm artist Aaron Rutten, and today I'll be reviewing the top new features in Krita 5.0. Krita is a free open source art application that is available on Windows, Mac, Linux, and Android. Despite being free, it's actually one of the best art apps available. Let's take a look at what's new in version 5.0 of Krita. There are a lot of new additions and tweaks to this version, so I won't cover them all, but I will focus on the ones that are the most relevant to illustration. Let's start with a couple of small updates to the UI, and then I'll get into the drawing and painting updates. If you're familiar with older versions of Krita, you may notice some of the icons and UI elements have been refreshed. For example, the assistant and measure tools look a bit different. I'm pleased to see that you can now detach the brush editor and leave it open as a palette. This makes it more convenient to experiment with brush properties and create custom brushes. If you are always accidentally clicking on palettes while you're drawing, you'll be happy to know that you can lock the position and docking of palettes or dockers as they are known in Krita. And now for some of the updates that affect drawing and painting in Krita. Drawing in two-point perspective has been greatly improved in Krita 5.0. The new two-point perspective assistant allows you to create perspective guides that you can snap your brushes to. You can edit the vanishing points and move the guidelines and you can even limit the area that the guides affect. This could be useful if you only want to draw in perspective inside a comic panel. But best of all, the guides are subdivided, creating a grid. This helps to visualize perspective distortion and creates units of measurement that can be used to keep objects in proportion to each other. The ability to rotate rectangles and ellipses in Krita 5.0 is an interesting feature. By holding Ctrl and Alt, you can change the angle of a shape without having to transform it after drawing it. This is useful for quickly laying out the form of objects using ellipses and rectangles. The smudge brush engine in Krita 5 has been reworked. You can now adjust the color rate and smudge properties independently. This will allow you to control how much the paint loaded on your brush applies to the canvas while smudging the paint that is already laid down. You can also enable the new smudge algorithm, which only allows color rate to interact with the opacity rather than color rate and smudging being linked. This means that you can control the loading of the paint separately from the strength of the smudging. This makes it easier to create brushes more precisely. The smudge algorithm has also been updated to be a bit faster with larger brushes. New in version 5.0, you can now add the impression of paint thickness to your strokes using RGBA brushes. This thickness can be modified as a brush property. It took some effort to figure out how to enable this property, you have to capture a brush tip with varied lightness first. These variations in lightness are what gives the brush the illusion of thickness. If you don't want to build your own brushes, you can use the presets that come with Krita 5.0. These are in the RGBA category. These are brushes that are using a dab that is in RGB with alpha or transparency support. Or in other words, it's a full color dab that is capable of having a transparent background. This is very similar to Photoshop's Mixer brush or Corel Painter's Image Hose. At first glance, these do a good job of giving the illusion of paint depth. While you can adjust the illusion of thickness as a brush property, unfortunately this paint thickness is just an illusion, and it cannot be controlled globally or per layer once it has been applied to the canvas. You also cannot modify the angle or other lighting properties. If you rotate the dab, the angle of the light is fixed to the dab, so you will end up with shadows and highlights that are all jumbled up. You can blend and scrape the paint with various tools, though once you do that, it flattens the paint depth. In my opinion, this is pseudo paint thickness, and while it simulates paint thickness better than most art apps, including Photoshop, it isn't quite on the same level as Corel Painter, Rebel, or Art Rage, which offer a thickness that is more dynamic. At this point, if the paint thickness isn't a separate layer function that is rendered in 2.5D with dynamic lighting, let's not even bother calling it thickness. What Krita is offering is more like loading multiple colors on your brush or painting with a full color stamp. Still, this is a very useful painting feature that adds a lot of character to brush strokes. I am a huge fan of texture brush properties because they are so useful for creating random and organic looking marks. Krita 5.0 has added some new modes for the texture property. Hard mix, color dodge, color burn, overlay, height, linear height, and more. These modes give you even more control over how your texture renders on the canvas and how it responds to the strength of your pen pressure. Combining texture with the paint thickness and strength properties creates an excellent paint break effect. It responds really well to pen pressure. 
Lighter pressure gives you more texture or break. Heavy pressure creates a thick stroke that covers the texture entirely. By varying my pressure, I can create the form of stones and then texture them in a single stroke. This is not something many art apps can do, and I'd say Critis Paint Break is one of the best I've tried. It's too bad Critis Paint Thickness isn't dynamic, because that would make this effect so much better. Depending on the type of drawing tablet you use, you may experience better results from the new brush smoothing options in Krita 5.0. You can now switch between the old timestamp-based smoothing method or the new driver-based method. The stabilizer mode is timestamp-based, so the brush just lags behind your cursor by a specific amount. The advantage to this mode is that it's easier to connect endpoints because you can see a preview of where your cursor will go whereas the weighted mode just creates a lag without any indication of where your line will end. Weighted tends to work better for faster sketching where you're using shorter lines and don't want the additional stabilizer cursor cluttering up the drawing area. I'm not a MyPaint user, but if I were, I'd be pretty excited that I can now import MyPaint brushes for use in Krita. They even run on a MyPaint brush engine. That's all of the drawing and painting features. Next, let's look at some of the new features that deal with color. Krita 5.0 offers a quick way to apply color to layers or the canvas using drag and drop. Simply drag a color onto an element of a layer to change the color of it. This is really just a shortcut for the paint bucket since you can change the paint bucket properties and it affects the drag and drop function. You'll probably want to increase the threshold and grow the selection if what you're filling contains semi-opaque pixels. If I drag a color onto the layers palette instead, I can instantly create a background fill on a new layer. Unfortunately, this only works with the swatches in the palette docker and not the artistic color selector. Gradients have also been improved in Krita 5. First, the gradient editor has been updated to make it more convenient to create and edit gradients. I can more easily access the color stops, delete stops, and sort the colors based on their brightness or hue. Second, the appearance of gradients has been improved. Artwork that is only in 8-bit color is not capable of creating smooth gradients, so dithering has been added to reduce banding in 8-bit gradients. You can see this more clearly if you make a gradient with only a few colors and then increase the contrast using a color adjustment filter with an S-curve. When compared side by side, you can see how dithering helps to break up the banding and gives the illusion that the gradient transitions smoothly from one color to the next. Furthermore, the depth of the 16 and 32-bit gradient colors has been expanded to include a wider gamut of colors and values that go into HDR ranges. Krita 5.0 features some improvements to the layers functionality. In earlier versions of Krita, when you transformed a layer, the preview would not correctly display what you were transforming. Krita 5.0 now includes an in-stack transform preview, which correctly renders any overlapping blend modes and layers while you're transforming. If you use a lot of layers like I do, you may want to quickly locate certain layers depending on their name. Krita 5.0 lets you do just that. For example, if I were working on artwork with line art, I could show only the layers with line art in the name. And now for some performance related updates. Krita 5.0 also features a rewritten resource system. This means Krita will start up faster and use less memory compared to older versions. With the new Resource Manager, you can also more easily add and remove resources like brushes and gradients. This makes importing and exporting content much simpler. The updated resource system and brush engine updates have introduced some important changes to the compatibility of files between version 5.0 and older versions of Krita. Krita 5.0 cannot load vector layers created before Krita 3.0. And brushes that were created in Krita 5.0 cannot be used with older versions of Krita. The color management has been improved in Krita 5 by leveraging the Fast Float plugin provided by Little CMS. This accelerates the speed of color management. For example, you may be working on a document that is in a high color bit rate, like 32-bit float, but you are viewing it on a display that only outputs an 8-bit. This plugin greatly speeds up that conversion. Don't believe me? Take a look at how much lag I am getting when I convert this high-resolution painting to 32-bit float. This is an extreme example, but it gives you an idea of what this plugin is doing. There is a lot more that this plugin does to improve color management, but it's really technical. I'm no expert on color management, but what I gleaned is that Krita is putting an emphasis on color accuracy using modern solutions. 
The same cannot be said for many of the other top digital art applications, some of which do not display colors very accurately, while others do not even offer color management options. There are also tons of new features and updates for animating in Creative 5.0. In particular, the animation docker has been merged with the timeline docker. And there is a new storyboarding docker. I don't do much animating in Krita, so I won't be getting into the animation features. But I will show you one feature that animators and non-animators may find useful. It seems like December 2021 was the time to release a time-lapse recording feature. Along with Krita, so did Rebel, Paintstorm Studio, and Realistic Paint. While the recording docker does offer some robust options for customizing your recording, and you can output to formats like MP4, I wasn't able to have any luck exporting a video, even as a GIF. Maybe I was doing something wrong, but all the other time-lapse recording features I have used in other art apps worked the first time. I can see that FFmpeg is required, but although I linked it, it still doesn't work. Rebel 5 installed FFmpeg on my system and renders videos just fine, so I think that Krita's video exporting must be buggy. Those were the most exciting features in version 5.0 of Krita, but do have a look at the release notes if you're interested, because there are a lot of small changes that I did not cover. For more digital art software reviews, Krita tutorials, and more, subscribe to my channel today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.